before my research. I didn't do any experimentation. I didn't touch any chemicals. I didn't measure anything. I didn't even step in a lab. All I did was go on a computer where you can build models of, of molecules and chemical systems and calculate reactions between them, calculate the energies of the system, calculate momentum or any other properties you might be interested in. But here's essentially what computational chemistry is doing. It's numerically approximating solutions to this equation here, the Schrodinger equation. And the reason you might want a computer to do that has a lot to do with that nasty looking equation right there, which makes it very unwieldy to do by hand. So if you can have a computer do this a million times faster than you can, you may as well do that. So here's kind of how this equation works. We've got these pitchfork looking things. They're called wave functions. So those are complete descriptions of the chemical system of interest. It includes information about the location of the molecules, the energy of the system, and everything else you might want to know. But you can't just look at a wave function and know the energy, or look at a wave function and know where all the molecules are. That information is kind of embedded in those pitchforks. So my analogy for this is that these pitchforks are like secret encoded messages. And this H caret thing is the code breaker. So you can use a code breaker to go into these wave functions, and in the case of H caret, you can pull out the energy of the system given by E. And that leaves your secret message intact, so that's why the pitchforks are on both sides of the equation. So that's essentially what computational chemistry is doing. It's calculating the energy of these systems.